Hello and welcome to this quick video where I'm going to be showing you how to make the array modifier in geometry node form and this is super useful whenever you're working inside of geometry nodes, it's a great tool to have and um, it's also quite informative and you'll probably learn something about how the array modifier actually works. So I'm going to go ahead and create a geonodes group on a, a basic cube and I'm going to try and recreate this behavior here that I have on um, this cube that I've made. So you can see that I have a few different offsets going on, a relative and an object offset. And this is basically the most complicated setup um, I can make with the array modifier. So using an empty to sort of curl and scale the um, the arrays, uh, the array instances, I guess, by uh, the transformation on this empty. So um, to recreate this, I'm going to show you because it's actually quite simple and it might sound or look complicated, but it's a very simple logical process. So I'm going to basically start out with a points node and this count is going to be the, the number of copies we have. So let's set it to something like six. And I basically want to say for each point, let's put a cube at that point. So I'm going to use the for each element node. And that's the new loop that we have in Blender 4.3. So let's go ahead and connect up our geometry generated output as well. And we basically want to join in our group input, which is our cube, into the generated output. And now we have six cubes stacked on top of each other. We need to transform them. And the transformation is where it gets interesting, because if I, I transform the geometry and I bring in my empty, I'm going to set this transform to be matrix and just plug in the transform like that. And now if I go back to my array modifier, uh, the default behavior, and only use object offset, you can see what we've now done is recreated the first uh, copy of the uh, transformation, basically. And if I were to do this again, like that, you can see we get the second copy. And one more time, we get the third. So it's actually a very simple process, what the uh, array modifier code is actually doing. It's just repeating this a set number of times. And the number of times it repeats it is based on the array index. So we start at zero, we go to one, two, three, etc. And the benefit of using the for each and loop is that we get this index output that is going to be exactly that. It starts at zero and ends at the number of points we have. So let's drop in a repeat zone to repeat this transformation the number of times based on this array index. So let's go ahead and plug in our cube into there, connect it to the group output. Now let's apply this transformation inside the repeat zone. And you can see we instantly get the exact same behavior. I think we might just have to add one or take one away to get the exact same count as well. But uh, it works nicely because the first iteration we're at zero. So there's no transformation being applied, then one transformation, then two, then three, then four. And if we want to um, add in like our constant and relative offsets, we can do that here too. So I'm going to use a uh, combine transforms node and I'm just going to combine our uh, empty transform like so and use that there, which is the exact same thing. But now what I can do is add in using a vector math add node, I can add in like a constant offset here. So this would be the equivalent of a constant offset. So if I go and add a constant offset in the array modifier, set it to uh, the same value, like one, you can see we line up perfectly again. A relative offset is just based on the bounding box of the, your input geometry, which in this case is literally the cube itself. But if you had something more complicated like a Suzanne model, then um, it would just be the box surrounding her. So let's use a bounding box node on our group input. And let's get the size of it by taking the length. So we're going to do a subtract and we're going to take the minimum away from the maximum. And this might give us some like weird negative values if our coordinates are a little bit, you know, somewhere in the negative range. So I'm going to use an absolute node after this as well. Uh, just to make sure that we only get the positive uh, size of this. And then I'm going to multiply this by some amount. And this amount is actually going to be our relative offset. So I can then go ahead and add that into the chain here. And now if I go to uh, our array modifier, turn on relative offset, let's, yeah, let's leave it at 1.2, that's fine. If I put that in here, we get the exact same behavior again. So we've done it basically. There's a few more things that you can do in the array modifier that I haven't gone through, like UV offsetting, um, but that is literally just storing the UV attribute inside this repeat loop. 
and basically adding to it each time. And what I've got here is actually just a um, a working demo of this uh, Ray modifier in Geonode's form with all the UI elements and every feature sort of accounted for here. So you can see it's a fair bit bigger than what I just showed you, but really the same core logic exists inside of here. And um, there's just a few more things going on to get all the different elements are working. So we have like various fit types. If we don't want a fixed count, we could fit to the length of something or to the curve. Um, and that works as you would expect for the regular array modifier. And um, yeah, we could go ahead and fit a curve length as well, which is a little bit of a weird, weird thing you would do, but you can do it if you want to. And yeah, I've just gone ahead and made like a nice clean UI for this. But if you want to download this uh, modifier slash node group, you can get it for free. I've put it in the description as I really do think this should be part of like default Blender anyway. And hopefully like whenever you're in part of like a bigger node tree now, you can just go ahead and drop down this array modifier um, very simply. So yeah, um, thanks so much for watching and hopefully you find some use for this.